This mini PC may look familiar to you. Geekom's AS5 is powered by ASUS and is packing a Ryzen 9 5900HX, 1TB of storage and 32GB of memory. Before we continue, would you like to win the latest i7 Intel NUC Mini PC? I know I would, so I've partnered with the good folks at Simply NUC to give you the chance to win Intel's i7 NUC 13 Pro Arena Canyon fully loaded and ready to rumble. You'll find the link in my video description. Basically, it's an ASUS PN52 Mini PC with Geekon branding. The box is branded, the Mini PC and even the boot screen. You get that fine looking ASUS Mini PC with nice build quality. It might just be the best looking plastic box I've come across. Other manufacturers, take note. Stop making ugly ass minis. In the box you'll find the mini PC, manuals, a thank you card, HDMI cord, monitor mount, screws and power supply. Geekom sent me this free sample for the launch of the AS5 and you can find it on their website pre-built for 609 US dollars. But they also provided me with a coupon for my viewers that takes off an extra 20 US dollars and brings it down to 590. Windows 11 Pro is included, but my Ubuntu test off a USB passed with no issues. Port wise, this mini is pretty decked out. Audio jack, USB-C and dual USB 3 5 gigabit on the front. On the rear, dual HDMI 2.1, DisplayPort 1.4, USB-C 10 gigabit with display out, USB 3 10 gigabit, dual USB 3 5 gigabit, and 2.5 gigabit LAN. <sighs> oh, there's also a barrel jack input for the included 120 watt power supply. Okay, let's have a look inside. Opening the AS5 isn't difficult, but it is flimsier than it should be. Four exposed screws, and then pull on the correct side until it gives away. Use a little force, but not too much, otherwise you'll do what I've done before and rip the ribbon cable right off. And the ribbon cable is important, as it provides another M.2 Gen 3 NVMe port, as well as a 2.5 inch drive slot for storage expansion, and also the display outputs. So you definitely don't want to break it. According to the spec sheet, storage tops out at 2TB on each M.2 port and SATA slot, which I find strange but I don't have anything higher capacity than that to test the claim. As mentioned earlier, 32GB of Kingston 3200 memory is included, as well as a 1TB Kingston NV1 drive. Underneath that is an M.2 Wi-Fi Bluetooth card. The CMOS battery isn't visible, so it must be underneath the board. I know I'll get this question, so I asked beforehand, and Geekom did confirm BIOS updates will be available for the AS5 as they're released. It's not up yet on the support page, but I assume it'll come soon. Or you can send them an email. The Ryzen 5900HX is a powerful 8-core CPU I haven't had the chance to try out yet. So it's cool I get to do it now. But be aware there are newer CPUs out there. So let's see how it compares to the successor, the 6900HX with 6000MHz DDR5 memory and also the latest Intel i7 NUC 13 Pro. Starting with some benchmarks. The AS5 5900HX is around 5% behind the 6900HX in single core Cinebench, which is 22% under Intel's latest i7. In multi-core, the 5900HX still holds up nicely. Again, it's 5% behind the 6900HX and only trailing the i7 by around 2%. But in video encoding, the margin widens. The 5900HX falls behind the new generation by 11% and 13% against the i7. Overall, the difference isn't massive in CPU tests, but that changes with graphics. In 3 d Mark DX11, the 5900HX is 34% behind Gen on Gen and 21% under the i7. And in DX12, it's trailing 39% against the 6900HX and around 16% against the i7. But is that really the case? Well, let's throw some game comparisons into the mix because that'll give us a better look at graphics performance. In Valorant, I couldn't see a big difference between the 5900 and 6900HX. The i7 1360p was a bit behind.
Forza Horizon 5 shows the generational leap in graphics performance for the 6900HX, with a doubling in frame rate. The 5900HX still holds up with Intel's 1360p, no problem. Elden Ring, same placing, but the 6900HX doesn't double the frame rate. Cyberpunk is another game that really shows the increase in graphics performance for the 6900HX. The i7 and 5900HX are pretty much identical. Same goes for God of War. Okay, so let's see how emulation holds up. The 6900HX and i7 do better here. And with PS3 emulation, the i7-1360p edges out the 5900HX most of the time, while the latest gen 6900HX is the clear winner. Nice. So, the Geekom AS5 is still a plenty powerful CPU and holds up well against the flagship Intel i7 NUC 13 Pro. But of course, there's been a sizable graphics performance leap with a 6900HX that can't be ignored. Maximum CPU temp holds up with the rest of the AMD minis. And the included NVMe maximum temp was impressive at 45C. There's no controller sensor, but it's not going to thermal throttle at this drive temp. The included Kingston drive is a good performing Gen 3 NVMe. Noise levels are on the high side. It's lower than the Intel based Asus PN64, but still above an Intel NUC, and clearly audible. Setting quiet mode to on in the BIOS helps keep noise down for stuff like web browsing, but when under load, it will eventually ramp up to the recorded figure depending on thermal load. Idle power draw is on the higher side, and max power draw is not too bad at 85 watts. That places it around the middle of this lineup. The BIOS is pretty simple. There are no options to push performance further or overclocking of memory, which is kind of disappointing. Okay, let's go over the pros and cons. The Geekom AS5 is a nice looking mini PC. It has ports galore, with up to 4 displays, dual Gen 3 NVMe drives, and a 2.5 inch SATA SSD mean you've got 3 storage drives in a small package. The AS5 performed well in the tests, however, the BIOS is very limited with no memory overclocking support, and the mini PC is noisier than the competition, including the i7 NUC. There's no USB 4 or Gen 4 NVMe support, which are now found in the latest minis. So, if you're interested in the Geekom AS5, I've linked it in the video description with an exclusive $20 off coupon. But, if you're looking for something on the budget side, do check out my Geekom Mini Air 11 review, which is a really nice entry-level mini PC. Cheers!